this is from Vice News. Uh, they interviewed a bunch of doctors working with COVID patients on the front lines in Louisiana. And uh, I already watched this earlier this week, but I wanted to show uh, all of you this on stream because this is truly gut-wrenching. Um, and I really try to give people the perspective of doctors, um, of nurses, because truly it's easy for us to get like frustrated and demoralized and, and sometimes become desensitized to the fact that we're living through a pandemic. And that's kind of crazy when you think about it, but they don't ever have the ability to feel, you know, uh, desensitized. They're living it every single day. Um, and the frustration that we all probably feel with anti-vaxxers is exponentially, you know, uh, worse for them. And you could just see on their faces here um, how worn out they are. So uh, let's take a look here. Hospitals across the South are at a breaking point due to the surge of coronavirus patients. The governor of Louisiana says his state is seeing an astronomical number of new COVID cases. Louisiana also has one of the country's lowest vaccination rates. As a frontline worker, it has changed my life tremendously. I'm no longer thinking about myself. I'm also thinking about the people that I work with and also people in my family. Because not a day go by that I don't uh, think that it may be our last day seeing each other, embracing each other, or spending time with each other. I didn't never think that a day of work would ever look like this. It's almost like it's a movie that we're living in our real life. Since the pandemic started, the calendar somewhat goes out the window. Uh, you have to be able to work on the fly, knowing that, you know, things are going to come from multiple different directions at, you know, at the same time. And, you know, our ultimate focus is to make sure that we're able to appropriately and adequately care for every patient that hits the door. And so there's really no set hours to do that. We get here when the work starts and, and we leave when the work is over. I have never seen anything like it. The Delta surge this time, we are seeing the patients are very much sicker. They're very much younger. The symptoms are very much different. We have had to open a few more units here at the hospital than we had to do in the beginning. I never, ever thought I would be in a situation like I am today, where I, I'm fighting to find beds, to find nurses, to find respiratory therapists every day to take care of patients. I never thought I would ever be limited in a treatment that I wanted to give somebody. This is America. Um, we ran out of one of our drugs to treat coronavirus a week ago. I never thought I'd have to think about the usual care things that I take for granted. Well, some days were hard. I mean, just to like put this in a different context, we all have those days at work where it's just the worst day ever and you remember it. And it's like, man, this, this was a day where I seriously considered walking off the job. Now take that day and like relive it over and over and over and over again. Like I'm sure that when these doctors and, and nurses, when they signed up for this job, they anticipated some really difficult days and difficult conversations with patients but they're taking like their worst nightmare and their worst days and they're living it over and over and over and over again and the thing about this is even when it ends even when it's over this isn't going to leave them like that feeling of stress the anxiousness it's going to live with them forever like these uh healthcare professionals are going to need decades of therapy I mean, the PTSD that they're going to experience, uh, the nightmares that they're going to have. It, it's just, I don't think people truly grapple with how big of a sacrifice this is. Yeah, so much so much PTSD. Um, it's really, really worrisome. Um, their well-being, their mental health is important. And, and these are human beings. Like, I feel like the folks who are working on the front lines, these are basically as close to superheroes as you can get in real life. Uh, but still, they're 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 not superhuman. They're human beings, and what we're expecting of them is is so 
much. Yeah, Survivor's Guild. Yeah, absolutely. Hard because of um, so many deaths, uh, so many unexpected deaths. We see this happening in more younger patients, and, and definitely that takes a toll. And, you know, you feel horrible for the families. You were letting them know that, hey, I think we're going to get there. We're going to be off the ventilator. And, and then you got to make that phone call. And, and uh, that, that's pretty brutal. Seeing, seeing people younger than myself die is brutal. Dying from a, a, a virus, from something that was preventable. Uh, it, it, it can take a little out of you. Uh, but after you take your moment, you get you get fired up and you get back in it, and you go take care of someone else. I see a lot of people that need help mentally, physically, and just sometimes just a conversation, just we can't hug, but sometimes I just want to hug somebody because, I mean, I walk past patients, I mean, family of patients, and they're just in a zone, and I just, I just, my heart just goes out to them. Imagine that, though. It's like, you know, you, you're talking to people. You're, having, you're explaining to them the seriousness of this conversation. Maybe they break down and you can't you can't hug them because it's a contagious disease. I just I mean, when we found out that my dad had cancer a while ago, you know, they, they took us all me and my family into this like uh, little private conference room and they talked with us. And I remember like one of the nurses like hugged my mom like, you know, they they don't like having these conversations. They don't like having to tell people that one of their loved ones dies, but to do it over and over and over again and not even having the ability to do what is natural to them, com comfort these people with a hug. I mean, it, this is ruining them mentally. I, I cannot imagine them doing this. And, you know, feeling the desire to walk off, they probably feel as if if they did that, they'd, they'd feel guilty because how many people, you know, um, are they leaving to die if they walk off? If, you know, they're leaving their colleagues even that much more shorthanded. I mean, this is truly a nightmare situation. I, I genuinely have no idea how these folks do this. I genuinely don't think I would be able to do it. I'm not capable of it. I often do see patients saying goodbye. Things like, I'm getting ready to go home. Things like, I'm getting ready to, to leave. And sometimes those are messages that they are sending that they may not make it. Can we cut? Everyone is overwhelmed. We are stressed. We're exhausted. We're tired. We're frustrated. Anywhere you can think of, we are that at this moment. Just this past weekend, I had a mental breakdown. Jeez. Just dealing with a lot at the hospital, seeing what these patients have to go through alone, then having to come home and be a full-time wife, and mother and everything else anyone needs you to be and you can't just... like when you look at her does this look like someone who just had a mental breakdown i mean she has it together like you wouldn't expect that she's going through this but they do such a good job at like putting on this brave face but i mean there's only so much you can take and you know it's not just that she's seeing deaths but it's the worst kind of death like these folks are dying alone no families allowed because the virus is contagious so i mean i just i can't imagine like this is the worst of the worst for these doctors seeing what these patients have to go through alone then having to come home and be a full-time wife and mother and everything else anyone needs you to be it's just to see the struggle that the patients are going through, the struggle my coworkers are going through. And it's almost we're all in a, a spot to where, what can I do to help? Am I doing enough? And it's like a weight because even though you shouldn't feel like everything is on you, excuse me, I'm sorry. You don't want to feel like everything is on you, but you want to make sure it was nothing else possible that you could have done, you could have gave. I've had coworkers where the kids have gotten COVID, 
So it's impacted me in a lot of ways. Seeing my coworkers go through what they go through. After a long day work, and I go home, I pray. I pray for everyone because I see a lot daily in my line of work. I see a lot. Excuse me. For many people who are on the front line with coronavirus, there, there are multiple traumas that they can experience. Some people have difficulty sleeping. Some people have nightmares. I've had nurses with well, you'd like to call it post-traumatic stress disorder, but we just can't seem to get to that post part. This is an illness that doesn't... That right there is just... Ugh. PTSD, post-traumatic stress disorder, but can't get to the post part. That's the thing. It's like they can't even begin the healing process. They can't even start the healing, and the damage is continuing to build up. This, I, like, I wish that I could, like, force every single anti-vaxxer to watch this video. Because all of the things that these doctors and nurses are describing is preventable. Hospitals wouldn't be filled up if everyone was vaccinated. This is a very effective vaccine. So this is all, that's, like, the worst part about this. This is all preventable and they know it's preventable that's part of what's killing them right the worst deaths imaginable where you die alone in a hospital very sick it's preventable that's what makes this so heartbreaking does not discriminate in the beginning we thought it only affected certain people uh, we may have thought it only affected people who were elderly or who had comorbid conditions etc cetera, etc cetera. but what we're learning as we go is that COVID-19 can affect anybody. Yeah, Selena, that's the thing. It's like, you know, um, there was another Vice documentary where um, the doctor would try to describe to people the necessity of getting vaccinated. And they would think that the doctors and the nurses, they're all like in on this big conspiracy. They're all crisis actors. And the doctor was would say that, like, as I'm trying to convince them to get vaccinated, they begin to get angry and they get worked up and then they become short of breath. And so, like, they can't even reason with them because they get sick. That's how, like, much they believe the bullshit that, they, that they've, that they you know, um, been fed. It's, it's just, this is, I don't think that people are going to really truly understand how horrific this situation is until we, like, look back and read about it in the history books. But right now, this is truly just, it's awful. It can affect uh, the elderly. It can affect infants. Uh, it can affect healthy people. It, it can affect sickly people. I think a lot of people who have not had family members who have fallen ill to this pandemic, they may not understand, but I want everybody to know it is for real. It's not a hoax. It's not fake. People are suffering and people are dying. It's not a game. It's not a gimmick. It's real. Don't let anyone tell you it's not real. It, it is really, really real. One thing that's very clear to me is... Uh... I'm sorry, but the fact that they have to say that it's not a hoax, the fact that these people who see this every day have to actually come out and say, this is real, trust me, it's gross. They shouldn't have to say this. They shouldn't have to come out here and convince people, hey, this thing that we're seeing, it's real. It's actually happening. Like, we're seeing people die. We're seeing them take their last breath alone in a hospital bed. Uh, we have uh, a great remedy for this, which is vaccine, which is um, incredibly protective. And it's just the best defense uh, that you can have against this disease. Hopefully, if, through enough vaccinations and enough previous infections, we, we won't have another surge like this. But I didn't think we were going to have this damn surge. I'm concerned how long we can sustain caring for people during these surges it 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 wears that's the thing selena it's like they, they they see all of this and then they have to convince others that they're not lying i mean it, it's just i can't imagine being in their position i can't i i just i'm not strong enough mentally to deal with what they're dealing with i, I couldn't do it like every single person in this video is truly like they, they are much stronger than me and i think most people because how how could you deal with this for such a long period of time I mean, the worst day on the job, relived over and over and over and over again, and people think that you're lying. 
it's 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 so fucked up it wears on some people for me personally um i i, I i'm not injured I'm, I'm tired but um i'm not depressed i'm not mad i'm not angry um, i'm uh, motivated to get the job done and get past the surge and do whatever i can do to make sure that we don't have another one Yeah. So this is, again, from Vice News. It's called On the Front Lines of a Louisiana Hospital as COVID uh, Rages. Really, really uh, important. I would encourage you to share this um, because people, they need to, like, stop being so callous about this. Like, I'll see friends on Facebook share, like, some dumbass photo, like a meme of, like, I don't know, just a, a chain link gate with the fence gone. And they're like, oh, this is this is basically masks. No, no. Stop being stupid. Pay attention to what's happening. Stop being so fucking callous and get vaccinated for the love of God.